Good day everyone. So today we will be focusing our discussion on physical changes in matter and we will be dealing with MELK 17. So ang MELK 17 natin explain physical changes in terms of the arrangement and motion of atoms molecules. Before we start with our discussion for today, uh, let us first recall the things that we have learned last week or actually first two weeks ng ating third quarter. So, particle nature of matter. So, ang particle nature of matter ay may four uh, principles. Number one, matter is made up of tiny particles and we have learned also that particles of matter are moving all the time. And third, these particles have spaces between them. And number four, uh, ang particles uh, ay nag attract ng isa't isa or there are forces uh, that attract uh, each one of them. Ang tawag natin dyan ay uh, intermolecular forces. So, uh, we have learned also na ang lahat ng matter ay uh, binubuo ng tiny particles. Uh, tinatawag natin itong atoms. And these atoms can bond with another atom. So, pwede tayo makabuo ng molecules. We also defined elements and um, substance and also compounds. So, those are the things that we have learned last uh, week. Alright, so let us define what physical change is. So physical change is the limit is limited to changes that result in a difference in display without changing any composition. So physical change is limited only in texture, change in color, change in temperature, change in shape as well as change of state like boiling point and melting point that are significant factors in determining those Changes. So today, uh, I will discuss the physical changes. So we will be focusing on the changes of state. So papaano ba nag-change ng state ang matter and how uh, does temperature and uh, other factors affect these uh, changes. So we will be dealing then with kinetic molecular theory to explain how these physical changes uh, are happening in matter. So we will be having a run through of the physical changes happening in matter because uh, I know that you already tackled this when you were in elementary. So we will just recall the concepts and uh, we will just give some examples for us to um, reinforce our knowledge about this. So let us start with uh, melting. So, when solid turns to liquid, we all know that uh, this is the process of melting. So, ang example natin dyan would be, uh, pag natunaw ang uh, yellow, also melted butter and uh, melted candle. So, uh, primarily from uh, solid, then it will become liquid. So, the process is called melting. The next one would be, Freezing. So, meron tayong tatlo, opposite yung process. So, ang opposite ng, ng, ng melting will be freezing. It's when liquid naman turns to solid. So, ang example natin dyan would be water to ice. And then, yung melted butter na frozen uli. So, it will become frozen butter. And as well as lava hardening in solid. So, that would be freezing. The third one of the physical changes would be evaporation. So, evaporation is the process when liquid turns to gas. So, ang example natin dyan is uh, drying clothes under the sun. Ang um, mga water molecules na nasa fabric, ng, nasa ating damit, pagka na-expose sa araw ang ating uh, mga damit, so nag evaporate sila. And then, uh, boiling water evaporation din yan, and ironing of clothes. When we iron clothes, kagaya na nangyayari pagka sa uh, inexpose natin sa araw o binilad natin sa araw yung ating mga damit. So, meron ding mga 
uh, water particles yung ating mga damit pag uh, pag na-expose sa sa hot iron so nag-evaporate din siya and uh, take note mga bata ang um, evaporation is different from boiling you can produce vapor without boiling the water so nangyayari nangyayari yan kapag uh, halimbawa sa dagat sa karagatan pagka sobrang init so hindi naman natin nakikita na kumukulo yung yung dagat pero nag evaporate siya. Alright? So, that is evaporation. And, ang kabaliktaran or opposite ng evaporation ay condensation. When gas turns to liquid. So, uh, if we try to uh, recall the, the process of water cycle, so, meron dong evaporation and then, the, the vapor will turn back into to liquid sa, sa clouds. Kaya, example natin dyan, clouds, And then, aside from that, we have morning juice, yung hamog natin. is is one of the best examples of, of condensation. And we have also moist in soft drinks can. Uh, Di ba, pagka tayo bumili ng soft drinks, lalo na't malamig, uh, yung soft drinks, mapapansin natin na namamawis yung, yung soft drinks. So, akala natin kung saan ang galing yung water, pero actually it's from the outside from the humid ano galing yan sa water particles na nasa hangin and then once these particles na nasa hangin yung water particles na nasa hangin ay dumampi o tumama dun sa malamig na na soft drinks so it will turn into uh, liquid so nagko-condense all right So, marami pang examples ng condensation. Pwede yung sa takip ng uh, ang ating uh, kaldero or ng rice cooker. So, mapapansin natin na mamawis din siya. That is also an example of condensation. And, number five sa ating physical changes would be sublimation. Okay? When uh, solid turns to gas. Uh, yung mga bagay or yung mga object na nagsasublime. So, ang best example natin dyan would be dry ice. So, hindi siya natutunaw, siya ay nagsasublime. From solid uh, phase, magigisang liquid. Another best example is yung moth balls natin. Tinatawag rin nating uh, naptalin ball. Nilalagay yan sa mga cabinet natin para hindi uh, uh, kainin ng ipis o ipisin yung ating mga cabinets. So, ginagamit yan na uh, para pangtaboy ng uh, mga insects. Ngayon, yung mothballs ay nagsasublime din. So, kaya kung mapapansin ninyo, kapag ka may naptalin ball kayo sa, sa cabinet o sa, sa lalagyan ng damit nyo, nag-aamoy ano nag naptalin ball. So, the third one would be air freshener. Uh, pwedeng sa CR, kung mapapansin nyo, uh, yung mga albatros na air freshener natin, So, when they are exposed to air, sumasama sila sa air, uh, sumasama sila, and then, uh, nagsasublime. So, mapapansin nyo, hindi naman sila natutunaw, hindi sila nagme-melt, pero nauubos sila. Alright? So, kasi, uh, nagsasublime yung mga particles ng mga objects na ito. And last one, sa ating physical changes, ay yung tinatawag nating deposition. Okay? Process when gas turns to liquid. So, nangyayari ito sa sobrang baba na temperature. Uh, kapag ka hinipan mo, kapag ka sobrang lamig, tapos hinipan mo yung window, so, kung mapapansin mo, uh, nag-fofrost or nagkakaroon ng yellow agad, that's from, from gas to solid. So, ang best example natin dyan, nangyayari ito sa ibang bansa, would be yung mga frost, ano, yung sobrang Uh, from from gas and expose yung yung moist na ito sa sobrang lamig it will become frost okay so yun yung example natin ng deposition so magka uh, magkabaliktad sila opposite sila ng sublimation deposition okay so we will be defining mga bata Uh, the statements of kinetic molecular theory. So, we will be, uh, kinetic molecular theory will help us to uh, understand how these physical changes in matter happen. Okay? Papaano nangyayari itong physical changes na ito? Uh, at tutulungan tayo ng kinetic molecular 
theory. So let us um, discuss each statement of molecular, a kinetic molecular theory. Number one, matter is made up of particles that are constantly moving. We we all know mga bata na yung mga particles ay gumagalaw. I know that uh, your teacher has already discussed this uh, in first quarter when you talk about sound all right, and heat. Uh, let me just remind you of this uh, of the following uh, movement, okay? Particle movement na matatagpuan natin sa, sa solid, liquid, and gas. So, we all know that solids are um, moving even though uh, it has a very small space in it. So, meron, meron pa rin siyang uh, paggalaw, nagbabibrate pa rin siya in place kasi meron pa rin siyang space. Uh, while liquid is uh, more freely compared with solid at lalo na ang gas. Ang gas ay um, mas mabilis ang paggalaw at mas malalayo ang kanilang spaso. So, makikita natin dyan yung pagkakaiba ng paggalaw nila. And later on, so through a kinetic molecular the theory, magkakaroon tayo ng understanding kung bakit ganito yung kanilang paggalaw. The next... Um, statement would be all particles have energy but the energy varies depending on the temperature uh, the sample of matter is in so if we try to recall once again yung sound natin okay so kung natatandaan natin sound is a mechanical wave at nagdedepende siya sa paggalaw ng particles kung bibili siya o hindi so we have learned na kapag ka tumataas ang temperature, tumataas din ang uh, paggalaw or yung rate ng, ng paggalaw ng mga particles, yung speed ng particles. So, the higher the temperature, the faster the movement of the particles. Always remember mga, uh, mga bata that the movement of particles will be re always related to the temperature. This is in turn determines whether the substance exists in solid, liquid, or gaseous state. Molecules in the solid phase have the least amount of energy, while gas particles have the greatest amount of energy. As uh, we uh, connect this to the statement number one. Okay? So, mapapansin nyo kanina dun sa aking, dun sa illustration natin, mas mabilis ang paggalaw ng gas primarily because, as we have said, solid has the less amount of energy. So, ang energy, mga bata, is always connected with temperature. Ngayon, yung movement ng particles ay nagsasabi sa atin na mataas ang kanyang enerhiya kapag siya ay mabilis. So, the higher the energy, the higher the temperature and the faster the movement of the particles. At kapag ka bumabagal ang paggalaw ng particles, bumababa ang temperatura niya. So later on, we will uh, further discuss that. Third concept, the temperature of a substance is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particle. So as I have said, Earlier, diniscuss natin yan sa first quarter when we talk about heat and temperature. We define temperature as the average kinetic energy. Ibig sabihin, ang temperature ay nagsasabi kung gaano kabilis ang paggalaw ng mga particles. Kaya sa tinatawag na average kinetic energy. If we try to recall, kinetic energy is energy in motion. Diba? Nung pinag-aralan natin nung first Quarter. So, kapag mataas ang temperature, ibig sabihin, mas mabilis ang paggalaw ng mga particles kasi nga, average kinetic energy siya. Pag bumababa ang temperature, mas mabagal o halos hindi na gumagalaw yung ating mga particles. Yung temperature ay nagsasabi na, mas, na mababa ito. Next uh, statement, a change in phase may occur when the energy of the particle is changed. Alright. Focus tayo doon sa melting. So, melting, solid to liquid. What is the temperature of, of ice? Mababa, mataas. 
syempre mababa. Therefore, uh, what can we say about the kinetic energy of the particles? How about the movement of the particles kapag mababa ang temperature? Of course, napakabagal. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga particle ng ice ay napakabagal gumalaw na para siyang nagsusolidify na kagaya ng solid. Ngayon, mga bata, kapag inilabas natin sa refrigerator yung ice, mag-i-increase yung temperature niya. Remember, when we talk about heat, pumapasok yung heat sa loob ng, uh, ng ice. So, ang tawag natin dyan ay endothermic reaction. And then, sa pagpasok ng heat doon sa ice, tumataas ang temperature niya. Ibig sabihin, unti-unti gumagalaw yung, sol yung particles ng ice na solid, unti-unti siyang gumagalaw and it will eventually turn into liquid. Kapag nag... Pag nakakuha siya ng enerhiya para mapabilis ang paggalaw niya, siya ay magiging liquid na. At kapag ka sobrang lakas ng enerhiya na nakuha niya, na sa sobrang bilis na paggalaw niya, siya ay magi escape at magiging gas na from liquid to gas. Ang tawag natin dyan ay evaporation na. So nakita po na nakita ninyo mga bata kung paano natin maiintindihan yung movement how does movement relate to the state or the phases of matter Kapag ka um, solid mabagal ang paggalaw lagyan natin ng enerhiya this solid will become liquid at lagyan pa natin ng mas malakas o mas mataas na enerhiya yung temperature niya tatas na sobra And then, yung kinetic energy niya, yung movement ng particles, bibilis ng sobrang bilis that these particles would escape okay, and become vapor. So, that is from solid to liquid and to gas. So, ayun yung nangyayari sa, sa changes ng phases ng matter uh, sa molecular level. And there are spaces between particles of matter. So, sabi nga natin, Uh, meron mga spaces kahit yung solid na dikit-dikit sila meron pa ring spaces sa pagitan nila na maliit so tatandaan natin na habang uh, from solid to liquid ang average space ng mga ng matter would be palaki ng palaki so solid maliit uh, liquid katamtaman and gas pinakamalaki always remember po ha The average spaces uh, from solid to gas is increasing. Kabalik taran sa when we talk about intermolecular forces. Okay? The last statement would be there are attractive forces between atoms and molecules and this becomes stronger as the particles move closer together. Now, so yung gas, ibig sabihin, ayun yung pinaka-weak or Uh, gas has the weakest intermolecular forces and solid has the strongest intermolecular forces. So generally, those are the statements of kinetic molecular theory. I hope that you learned a lot uh, from this video. Thank you very much and God bless. Do not forget to subscribe and like this video.